Welcome to Nifty 50 Photographers. I'm Richard Gill, I'm a professional photographer. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to make a panorama without using a tripod. Now, and this is a two-part video. So in this first video, I'm gonna show you how to shoot your images. And in the second part, I'll show you how to stitch them all together and process it in Lightroom so you get a nice, evenly balanced exposure of the whole scene. So let's talk about a few things you need to do when you're taking a panorama. Now, the first thing you need to remember is shoot your photos in portrait mode. And the reason for that is when you come to stitch them all together, you're going to lose the top and bottoms of your frame as it starts to line them up. So allow some space at the top and bottom of your frame. The next thing you want to do is overlap your scene. So when you're looking around, now I'm going to take a panorama of the village behind me. Down here in the foreground, I'll show you in a second, is a nice old uh, country house called Sedgwick House. And behind it is, is a castle in the distance, which uh, might just be able to see. So I'm going to move across that scene. So each time I take a photo, and I'll show you this in, uh, I'll film it as I do it, I need something in the scene on one side of my image, the side that's going to overlap with the next one, and use that as your reference point. Now, the third thing you need to remember is you want the whole scene to be evenly exposed. So the best thing is to put your camera in manual. But the thing I would do first, and I'm going to do that now, is just check what the average exposure is for the scene, but particularly make sure you're not going to blow your highlights. So take a look at your histogram. If you don't know how to read a histogram, you need to watch this video. So let's check our exposure. I want to make sure my sky isn't blown. It's a nice blue sky, and it's quite bright in comparison to the rest of the scene. I'm going to use a polarizing filter today, but like an idiot, I left that at home. Never mind. So let's meter across the whole scene that we're going to take. Okay, now I've got that set at a 320th and f10, and it's giving me a pretty good average exposure right across the scene. In the very uh, darkest point, it's going to minus 1.3 underexposed, down to minus. 0.7 in the brightest part of the scene. And what that means is I can recover all that in, uh, in post-processing and there's no danger of all my highlights blowing. So I'm going to run with that. How do you do this? Now the thing you need is a strong finger because what you want to do is you need to rotate your camera about what is called the nodal point of the lens. And if you want an idea, it's probably about a third of the way in and you want your camera to rotate about that point. Now the reason for that is, this is where your image is converging in the lens. If you have your camera on a tripod, you're rotating about this point here, which is actually further back. So I'm going to take my images now and I'll show you these through the viewfinder of the back of the camera as well. But there's a couple of things to bear in mind as you're doing this to help you get set up. As well as looking for your reference points in the scene, bear in mind the top and bottom of your frame. And I'm going to use the uh, natural horizon and also in the foreground, I'm going to use this uh, hedge line as well. I'm going to keep that in the middle of my frame and I'm going to use the grid lines on my display to put the hedge on the bottom grid line and probably the horizon on the top one. And if I keep them in there and I know I'm going to keep them uh, reasonably level, I'm going to come to crop them all afterwards to uh, stitch together the panorama. It won't matter that I've lost a bit of foreground or a bit of sky. There's nothing interesting in this foreground. The other thing you want to do before you start is set up your finger and get into the middle of your scene and then rotate back to as far left as you want to go. Now I've got this uh, Sedgwick house on the right hand side of my frame now. I'm going to take my first image there. I'm then going to move my camera so that it is in the left hand bit of my frame. So I've got about a 10 to 20% overlap. Take another image there. Right now I need another reference point. There is another building there that I can use, so I'll use that. Third image. And then I'm going to move around. Fourth image. Now the important point is have more overlap. Don't have, it's far better to work with more overlap than not enough. So don't worry if you take too many images, it's not a problem. Only becomes a problem when you haven't taken enough. 
Okay, so that should have got me my eight million images uh, or something like that. I'll check when I get back actually, just how many I did take. So they can be all stitched together in Lightroom and I'll show you how to do that in next week's video.